we could just disappear and spontaneously combust at any moment. We could just fall into the void. We could just, um, we could just disappear into space and nothing would stop that. And so then we have to create friction and be frictive and bump up against things, meaning fill our calendars with uh, millions of things to do and fill our minds with millions of thoughts and bump up against drama and bump up against struggle so that we feel like we exist. baby let's go stevie <laughs> how in the world are you thanks for being here thanks for having me ben this is so <laughs> fun <laughs> yeah for real let's um let's jump into it because the best way for for peeps to get to know you if they don't already know you is just to dive straight in and what what i connected with you or reson and resonated with you is it seems like again i'm still pretty new to your content and your message but it seems like recently you've had a lot of enlightened, like enlightening moments with just wealth and abundance. Is that true? Mm, it is. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been so blessed lately and really um, am in a period of reaping like all the things that I've sowed and um, I've just been working really hard and, and aligning so deeply with what I'm calling in and it's all mm -hmm. happening. It's really fun. I love that. So before, because I would definitely want to hear about all these things that are aligning for you, like how you did it. But I would love to begin this thing is to hear about how it wasn't this way. Like it it, it, if you would like just mention like the blocks, right? So we can hear like, I don't necessarily believe in like mistakes necessarily, but like the blocks, how you blocked yourself or how it wasn't working out like you thought. I'm just curious to just like, yeah, just take us down to where not so abundant, Stevie. Take us down the shitty part. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, well, I think that I was raised to, now this, I, I had a very privileged childhood and I have always had my, my, my needs were always met, not quite my emotional needs, but my needs were, were met. I was safe, I was fed, I had, I was plentiful. However, um, I really learned in my family dynamic that um, there's no such thing as easy and that struggle is the way to be. Like struggle, hustle, work hard, um, scary, scary, plan for the worst. That was really like the way, the, the energy that I grew up in. And so, um, you know, never go into debt. Um, start your 401k when you're an infant, you know, like... <laughs> Uh -huh. um, and nothing would ever come easy. And I saw, I saw that, but I also was told that. And so I think, um, you know, talking about the old way, the old paradigm I used to live in is that struggle was my middle name. It was mm -hmm. who I was. And, um, it, so, and I, I also was so frictive and I just want to explain that really quick. So one of my best friends is her name is Dr. Samantha Rader. She's a depth psychologist and she has for the past 10 years been writing this book that's going to be released in 2021 all about um, the coping styles. And she has created 11 coping styles and essentially what they are is defense mechanisms mm -hmm. of how we protect ourselves in the first five years of our lives and now how they're still showing up in our adulthood and one of those coping styles is frictive and frictive? what that yep interesting and what that means is um and i'm giving you this little backstory so i can so you can understand yeah, where i'm going with go it, for it. But i love it frictive essentially means that we didn't get enough containment and holding and and close touch as babies and so we actually have believe but we have a belief as frictives that we could just disappear and spontaneously combust at any moment we could just fall into the void we could just um we could just disappear into space and nothing would stop that and so then we have to 
create friction and be frictive Mm -hmm. and bump up against things, meaning fill our calendars with uh, millions of things to do and fill our minds with millions of thoughts and bump up against drama and bump up against struggle so that we feel like we exist. Mm -hmm. And so um, I just, I just preface that because I have been really working with that frictive part of me that feels like um, I have to bump up against drama in order to feel like I exist. Oh, I love this. And so the opposite then, that when you heal the frictive, it actually means stepping into spaciousness, that um, the void, if you think about this, the space in this room, the space all around us is actually, it's so, it's so paradoxical, but the space around us is actually what keeps us together. It's the most dependable thing. And so, um, and here, you know, full transparency, I'm still very much in my frictive coping and uh, I'm just beginning to learn what it means to be spacious and to actually let myself be held by the stillness and not needing to fill my calendar and not needing to fill my mind with thoughts and mm. enjoying the stillness and, and um, realizing that I will not spontaneously combust. <laughs> and so, yeah. And so, um, just to answer your question about the old way, I mean, I just, I've, I've been in struggle for most of my life. I've been in drama and like working hard and making things really always having something to focus on something to worry about. And as I'm coming out of that, my manifestations, my dreams, the things that I really want are now coming into fruition. That's so dope. Dang. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, that's all, so good and i like so this got me excited for this book so you said there's 11 styles and frictive right so like the whole struggle so for you what were you like what struggle like you're talking about like working hard but what was like a real life thing that you like because so many of us i was actually talking to someone earlier this week and that and what they told me um long story short this person works 14 hours and they were telling me they want to do more videos and I asked why they were doing them. And they said, because they think it's laziness. I was like, well, do you think you're lazy if you work 14 hours a day? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not. Yeah. And so for me, right, like, like working with like coaching with people is that he is, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this, of how you relate to this and you live like this. He was filling his calendar, definitely not lazy, working hard, one of the hardest workers, um, because he wanted, he was avoiding the stillness, what he didn't want to face, right? And so to me, I could go deep into fear or whatever, but I want to know, like, was there something you were avoiding? Like, what was like that real life scenario? And now looking back, you're like, oh, this is why like I was really trying to stay busy and like stay frictive. Yeah, for me, it was my worth. It was like, this is how I gain my worthiness. I have to prove, I have to prove myself by doing more. I have to prove myself for, by achieving. I have to prove myself for making more money. I have to prove myself by um, getting accolades or, or success. And, um, and then I'll be worthy and I cannot stop until everybody knows how worthy I am. And until everybody knows that I matter and, you know, it comes from, from trauma and, uh, you know, abandonment and, and feeling like I don't, I'm not worth anything. Mm -hmm. And, um, so my coping style was to, to prove myself and to, um, keep going and keep achieving and proving until, and and then, but it never ends, you know, it never ends. And, um, I would just keep achieving, achieving, and there would never be enough. And then the next, the next level, then I would be enough. But um, that, I think that's what it was, is I would stay frictive because I didn't want to face the internal pain of, of my feelings of unworthiness. And also I couldn't stop until I needed, to, until I proved myself. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Were you raised, um, what I've seen, I'm curious if this is the same for you, is that a lot of women nowadays right like this is such a good thing that now it's like you know women empowerment like hustle like you're a girl boss whatever that may be you know and i love that and like anything has so much value and then of course it always has like the the pendulum swings both ways or there's two ends of the stick but what i've seen is exactly what you've said is that women have now been seeking value through accomplishments 
mm-hmm. instead of just knowing it's like, no, you don't need to do absolutely anything. It's like, mm-hmm. just, just because you're here, that mm-hmm. that's enough. Like you're worthy and all those things. Um, so were you raised and really like validated and rewarded for your hard work? Is that kind of where it comes from? Or were you trying to earn that? I wasn't only validated and rewarded for my hard work, but I was also rewarded for my performance because yeah. so, you know, we were just talking a second ago before we hit record that, you know, I'm a professional singer on the side and I've been professional singer for about 15 years. And so I am literally a performer, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, and, and this was, and this was my therapist was so like, so interesting to work out because cool. I was, I'm literally a performer. I love performing and I got love and validation for performing. So mm. even though the performer is in my bones, it's who I am. It's like God given talent that I have. I also realized that I was being loved and, and, and praised for the performer part of me and not really for me. Mm. And, and so I had to grapple with not only am I proving, but I'm performing. And when I, when I perform, and blah, 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 like, you know, blah, blah, boom. <laughs> then I, right. Then I receive love. So, and, and to, to your point about the, um, a lot of women who are, who are, who are in that, that cycle, I completely agree. And I think that, um, we've lost the art of receiving and we've, mm. lo- and I've done a lot of work around the divine feminine and what it means to be in the divine feminine. And honestly, None of my hard work, Ben, is what called in my, my success. I love this. It's the receiving mm-hmm. and the alignment and the allowance that did it. I was spinning myself in circles by, and just banging my head up against a wall with like the, the right funnel. It's like bullshit. I don't even have a funnel anymore. <laughs> yeah. I don't even have a funnel anymore. I, don't, I honestly don't really know what a funnel is. <laughs> like it's <laughs> still confusing for me. But anyways, like it's, it's we're so scared to slow down and receive. And I don't know, I don't want to speak for, you know, women who are listening to this podcast, but I know for me, I had the belief that the feminine was weak. Yes. I thought that I only could get what I wanted by like going (laughs) and like fucking forcing and pushing forward and being in my masculine. And there's a time and a place for, for, for both. Like I, there is a time when I can be my masculine and it's really helpful for me, but it's a totally different thing to sit back, invite, allow, and receive everything that the universe wants to give me. And so um, we, I think we're kind of in this, this culture where we're just going, going, going and achieving and achieving and achieving. And we've lost the art of, surrender we've lost the art of femininity we've lost the art of receivership mm-hmm. and uh that's that's not the game i'm playing in, playing anymore <laughs> <laughs> i love that so this is absolutely beautiful and i think you just inspired the name of the podcast why hard work doesn't work i think that's what we're going to call it perfect <laughs> love it <laughs> but um so what was the shift for you was it i mean of course everything's gradual but do you remember a moment or, or a couple key moments that are like, this isn't working. Mm-hmm. Well, I started, I started working with my mentor, John Wineland and he's, um, cool. uh, you know him? Yeah. So I lived in South Carolina for a year. So I know he does his retreats in North Carolina, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, and so he's a polarity coach and a polarity. He's, he's a teacher on divine masculine, feminine and polarity. And he does men's work. He does women's work. And I'm in his women's program right now. And his mentorship has been completely life-changing for me because it's helped me. Um, I don't, I'm try, I don't know Ben, that there was a, a moment that I realized, oh my God, this isn't working. I think it was a collective a collection of moments and a collection of, of ahas of like, Hey, this isn't really working anyways. Um, but when I started to experiment with the feminine in my business and then the feminine in my relationship, because I was, I was so masculine in my relationship as well. Mm. And it was really not good for us. What did that look like? It looked like controlling. It looked like me trying to lead him. It looked like not surrendering to him. It looked like me not trusting his, his, his uh, leadership. Um, it looked like me not believing in him to mm. do the thing. It, it meant me taking all the responsibility and me making the plans and me just being like, here we go. This is what we're going to do. 
And, yeah. you know, if we as, as women want, and now here's the thing, if you want to be in your masculine and you like to be in your, and this is for heterosexual relationships, but if you want to be in your masculine and you're comfortable there, that's fine. But just know that you will attract a more feminine man. And if that's okay with you, that's okay. Like that's the, that's what you're, you're calling in. But if you don't want a feminine man and you want a masculine man to lead the way and guide you and fuck you to God, then you have to be willing to take your lady balls off. (laughs) And that was something that I really had to grapple with and, and ask myself if I was willing to do. And here's the thing. And it's like, it makes so much sense that we, this is, it, it, it's not, there's no shame in this. It makes so much sense that so many women yes. are, are in our masculine because mm-hmm. we have endured thousands of years of murder and rape and pillaging yep. mm-hmm. and, and being burned at the stake. So it's like, yeah, we're not, I don't trust you guys, you know? Yeah. So we often think that the masculine is going to drop us. And so it's in the healing of all of this and in the healing of those old wounds and, uh, coming back into our essence and trusting the masculine again, that even if they do drop us, we can handle it and we can always course correct. But um, it's not really serving us to just think that the men are going to drop us and, and treating them as so, treating them like they've done something wrong before they have. <laughs> that's so, uh, that's beautiful. Cause it's, and I just want to echo what you said about like, it's not like, it just makes sense. And that's yeah. what I've been learning too, is like everything just like, it makes sense. And why, why we're this way. It's like, you didn't do anything wrong. It's like, no one's to blame. Even technically it's like, even white males, right. Is like, it's yeah, we can blame them, but it's like, if you blame them, you stay there. Like to me, I've realized if you blame your past, you will stay stuck there. So it's like, yeah. No, it's like we're always evolving and so i just like and that allows you to heal that and i just thought that like that's so cool um so how has that like in your relationship how has that evolved i guess or what i'm trying to get to is were there key moments in you like was it just friction i I assume that that Mm -hmm. that was frictive too yeah more so than frictive i think it was me literally and figuratively and energetically like putting him down in that I didn't trust that he could lead me and lead our Mm. relationship. And so he didn't try because, that's big. you know, because here's the thing, the, the whole point of the masculine is to be consciousness, the embodiment of consciousness, the embodiment of awareness, the embodiment of a container. And the essence of the feminine is, energy and pleasure and desire and so if we're if i love the bowl and oatmeal uh metaphor which is the masculine is the bowl and the feminine is the oatmeal the masculine holds it together he gives us boundaries and edges um he doesn't hold us back but it's 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 the container Mm -hmm the feminine is soupy and lumpy and doing her flowy (laughs) thing. If we didn't have the bowl, we would just spill out everywhere and there'd be, it'd be chaos. But if the, the, if the bowl didn't have, it would be empty. It would just be a container. There'd be nothing in it. So it's, we actually bring the energy to the masculine to fill it up, to inspire it, to evoke something different. And we do that with our, our bodies, with our transmission. And, I'm getting lost. What was the original question? I'm getting so excited about it. <laughs> no, I mean, this is all like, to me, like, I'm just like, for me, I feel like I'm just like, oh my, I have, like, I want to ask you so much, but. Oh, so. oh so, yeah. So I remember. So um, if I was, if there's, if I wasn't giving him any energy, then it's, there's emptiness. It's empty. Mm-hmm. And um, otherwise, like the other option is treating him like the king that he is, worshiping him for the king that he is. And then guess what? He shows up as the king he is. Mm -hmm. If we are, um, and Alison Alison Armstrong talks about this, that most women are frog farmers. We turn princes into frogs Mm -hmm. because 
because we just see them for their faults and how they're not showing up and what they're not doing right. And then they become frogs. And so what if we were to see our men, again, in, 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 if we're in heterosexual relationships, if we were to see our men, our fathers, our, our husbands, our brothers as totally full, totally whole, there's nothing that mm. they need to do differently. We just inspire something else with our open-hearted yes and no. Um, can you, can't you imagine how different they would show up if you're seeing them as their best? Because they really, you, I really think that you guys just want to show up for us. Mm -hmm. And if you, if we give you the space to do that, instead of like, like, like filling you with air, like a balloon, mm -hmm. and instead of being pokey and like trying to pop you, giving you all the cushy space to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and expand mm. into the most beautiful balloon that's ever ballooned. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's so cool. I mean, I love all of that because it's, 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 I want to stay here because it's like, because it goes back into this, um, what we kind of talked about, like working hard. And it's again, right. It's like, and again, it makes sense because like how the relationship and heterosexual things, right. With like men and women. And so it's like, it, it comes from a place of fear, which is again, understandable. And, but it's, I love how you said it, it does exactly what you don't want it to basically. Yeah. Right. Cause if you're trying to control it, if you're trying to like it disempowers us, yeah, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, which is just, it's so fascinating. Like it really does the opposite of what we hope it's going to do. Um, yeah. Was it, did your relationship start off like that? Or was it just like, you know, as the years went on, like it evolved and then you noticed that. Did it start off with the nagging and criticizing? <laughs> is, that you're, is that what you're asking? <laughs> I don't think I said nagging, criticizing. Well, I just, just... That, that part. <laughs> I mean, yes, the answer up. is yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my, because that's also what I saw my parents do. Ah, yes. You know, and that's that's the dynamic that I was, that I just thought was the thing. And so, yeah, I've been nagging, nagging and criticizing for years. And mm -hmm. so now I'm in this place in this last, like, year and a half of our relationship. And, you know, I go, I, I lose it and I come back and I'm not perfect and neither is he. Sure. And that's the whole point of this, of the relationship. But um, now in this past year and a half or so, I'm trying a new way. And in this experiment of how might I transmit, use my body as a transmission to evoke what I want, mm -hmm. you know, and to make him feel really good. And um, and just to, to go deeper into that really quickly to, to give an example of what that means, we are always transmitting something with our bodies, men and women, but most of the time our transmissions go unconscious. So for example, like I'll just speak for myself. A lot of times after I started doing this work, I noticed that my shoulders were hunched, my eyes were down, my heart was closed. I was kind of walking in this like forward penetrative motion like in a masculine penetrative motion and i'm like oh what do you think that's transmitting what do you think that's evoking out of life out mm. of my relationship out of my business probably not much of anything mm. you know so what would it be like if i use my body to open to put my shoulders Ooh, back had to have my body. eye yeah it's all about the body it's all about the body to have my eyes up and open, my heart open to receive, my heart open to be felt, what is that transmitting? So she, if, there, if, if I wanna be claimed or ravished or owned, do you think that my eyes are down, my heart's closed and my shoulders are hunched? <laughs> do you think that's gonna evoke that out of him? Mm. Do you think that's gonna evoke the ravisher? Absolutely not. So how would my body move? What would, be, what would, my, what would my transmission be like if as, as she who must be ravished or she who must be mm. claimed or she who must be worshiped or she who must be seen. And can you stay in that transmission? Can you stay in that evocation until he, that you then evoke it out of him? Mm. I love that. Will you talk about evoking the ravisher? Uh, like yeah. that, that should be like a book name or something. <laughs> right? Oh my God. E evoke the ravisher. But like, cause I like, even with, 
right? You're talking about worshiping him and him worshiping you. And I think that sometimes feels icky to people, mm -hmm. right? But, and even like being ravished, I think a lot of women want that, you know? And so- We do. But oh, as, oh, don't have right? no- Exactly. Have Let's no talk about mistake, <laughs> make no mistake that we do. Now, yeah. I don't hear, I don't want to speak for everyone. Maybe you don't, but when I do my workshops and I teach on this stuff, you'd be surprised how many women are like, I want to be fucked with the dragon cock, you know, and it's like, <laughs> you know, and I'm, it's like, yeah. And so it's, it, I think that we have hid that part of ourselves, like the animalistic, wild, untamed feminine, because yes. we think that it's bad or wrong. And so what if we were to own that? So how do you, do you want to be claimed? Do you want to be ravished? Do you want to be, maybe you just want to be loved. Maybe you just want to be heard, but mm. whatever it is, how does, I want to be ravished. So she who must be ravished, how does she move pleasure through her body? How, mm. how might she run her fingers through her hair? How might she speak? Is it slow and sultry? I bet it's not, that's not, she must be ravished, you know? So um, it's just a, it's, this is why they call it an art mm. because this is a yogic art that we practice and practice and practice. And it's, it's not perfect. Um, but you just get into this place where you practice your transmission and you practice evoking what you want out of your relationship and, and your life. So how do you do that? Like, so, how did you, I know I've, I've read you talk, I've read how you talked about it, but will you. I mean, go is deep, ravished so, right now. Go, yeah. go for it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it would, it's, it's, I wish that people could, could see me and not just hear me. But the idea is you ask yourself, how would pleasure move through my body as she who must be dot, 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 whatever your she who must be is. And so for me, for she who must be ravished, I move really slow mm. and I offer him my neck and I caress my lips and I run my fingers through my hair and I become an embodiment of pleasure. And there's, a, there's like a, so the, the feminine is always an invitation. It's not mm. forward motion. The masculine is forward motion. It's penetrative, right? Mm -hmm. The feminine is leaning back. And it's an invitation. It's like a, like a come hither. Yeah, I was you know? thinking come hither too. Come hither. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's really different for each person. But I, th I think the best thing that you could possibly do to begin to tap into this is having a daily pr pleasure practice. Mm -hmm. And what that means is putting on a playlist for 20 minutes, having really juicy, feminine, luscious, hot songs that you can put on and listen to. And the idea is letting your pleasure be your guide. And I think don't mistake pleasure with sex. That's one form of pleasure, yes. but pleasure just means pleasure. So maybe it's pleasurable for you to take a deep, deep belly breath. Maybe it's pleasurable for you to stretch your body and get, and get really, 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 really tight and then release. Maybe it's pleasurable for you to caress the inside of your arm with your fingers or scratch at your yoga mat, whatever pleasure means for you, letting your pleasure be your guide and allowing yourself to be an embodiment of that. And here's what I can tell you will probably happen if you're not used to this, you're gonna get, you're gonna have resistance, you're gonna get bored, you're gonna get annoyed, you're gonna want it to be over, you're gonna wanna rush, if you can just stay with the resistance, with the fear, with the part of you that um, wants it to be over and you just stay with it over and over and over again and you make it a daily practice, just watch how your body responds if you mm. become an embodiment of pleasure. I love that. What, did you used to think that pleasure was wrong? Um, I definitely grew up religious. Somehow, Ben, I was so lucky, I did not, integrate all that shit. I was, I was, you know, I, I think I did for a little bit, but I pretty much snapped out of all of the oppression when I was about 19. Uh, and I never looked back. I never, and, and to this day, I, I have so much 
reverence for pleasure and and I hold it so sacredly and I've been I don't know what it I think it just wasn't my path to like do that healing um I didn't take it in I was like I don't think this is right I just I like it I like it too much <laughs> I like it too much that's awesome um so this is really cool I like how we started um well I mean this whole thing is technically like wealth and abundance and pleasure and it's all related and I think watch how much watch how much abundance you bring in when you're connected to your pleasure yeah (laughs) and that's and that's what's so fascinating because that's what it is it's um and I would love for you to talk about how this how it's connected how like your worth and wealth and money and pleasure how it really what it comes down to is worth and treating yourself with that pleasure and like what you deserve and like worshiping yourself not just him you know so will you really talk about how this right it goes into pleasure sexuality relationships we talked about that and like how does even this all of tie in with like your business doing well and like making lots of money as well yeah i'm trying to think about where to begin um (laughs) well i don't i think it's just this this journey that we're all on of not even I really don't even think it's like integrating or implementing new things. I think it's actually remembering who we are. I agree. And it's, it's the remembering of the souls that we came here to came to the planet as and dusting and, and being feeling into and relishing into the light that is us. That is our essence. And maybe it's been caked on with mud and bullshit and other people's stuff and, and dust. And so this work, I feel like is just, it's like a cleaning. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not, it's not that you just, you find your light and you create your light. It's like, no, it's always been there. It's -hmm. just more that you remember and you allow yourself to shine. And I know that sounds so, you know, esoteric, but it it is, it's not Mm -hmm. that we're doing new shit. It's that we're just remembering, we're coming back to the remembering and getting closer and closer to source and the God that is us, that is within us. I love that. So you said, I love the word allow. So mm-hmm. how, how have you allowed um, more abundance and wealth to come into your life? Just like allowing, like you said, cause you said hard work wasn't the thing. Like it's just cause the universe and God are like, literally like Stevie, take this damn thing, but you're blocking it. So how did you yeah. start to allow it? I just stopped thinking that it was so hard. Yes. Like it's just not, hard it's really (laughs) really really easy and um life gets to be easy money gets to be easy business gets to be easy and if you do the work and come back to that truth every single day and not just come back to the truth and like say your affirmations that's fine but what would it feel like in your body a huge part of my work like a cornerstone of my coaching style is embodiment so what does it feel like in your body for things to be easy can you practice that feeling over and over and over again. And what you do, even if it's uncomfortable and and foreign at first, is you train your nervous system to to be at a new homeostasis. Right now, the homeostasis might be struggle and friction and and drama and hard and uh, 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 and that thing. And so the more you train your nervous system to expand into this new homeostasis, the ease, the love, the, um, the fun, the joy, that becomes your new homeostasis the more you practice it. So I, I always want to go way beyond mindset. I want to go way beyond thought work. It's important. But if you're leaving out the body, you are missing a huge piece of the healing. Um, and that's why breath work and why I became a breath work facilitator in the first place is because breath work is all about bypassing the ego, bypassing the mind, going right into the body. And when you're in the body, you're connected to truth. Um, and so breath work has been a huge, huge, like profoundly transformative uh, modality in my own life and the lives of my clients, because it just helps us come into, again, the, remem- the remembering, mm. come into the body and pr- practice those feelings, practice that transmission in the body. I love that so much. Like, that's cool. It's like, yeah, just embodiment is empowerment, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Um, So what's, before we wrap up here, what's one, like, what's one small tip? Actually, you've already really given like plenty of tips to really get into your body. Like, go listen back because you've already given like so many tips. But so breath work, so is there anything else that we haven't touched on? Like, 
that would surprise mm. people of like how to get into your body or not even just that, like anything that you want to touch on in general? Um, yeah, I mean, for, for me, it's to get in my body is breath work. It's pleasure, my pleasure practice. It's also connecting to your senses. So like we're, uh, and that's so feminine as well. We're also, we're so often living in the mind. And so can you, in this moment, connect to your senses? What do you see? What do you hear? What do you taste? What can you feel? What can you smell? And actually like, and then maybe even connecting to your senses and closing your eyes, putting one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly mm. and seeing if you can actually put your awareness in your left pinky toe. Mm. And then maybe your right shin. That's presence. And that's you just using the senses and the awareness to bring our bring bring it down, bring the awareness from the mind and down into the body. Um, is that helpful? Yeah, no, I love that. That was beautiful. <laughs> Very helpful. Well, I know everyone's gonna want more Stevie. So, where can we? Where's the best way to connect? I know you have a breathwork membership, um, and your coaching sounds really really cool too. Thank you. Yeah, come hang out with me on Instagram at Stevie L. Wright underscore. I'm thrilled, 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 and so excited and so proud of this project that I'm, I'm creating right now, my Breathwork membership. It's called The Breath Channel. Love that. Two meanings, two That's meanings cool. of channel. Yeah, The Breath Channel. And um, it's going to be so great. People are going to be able to log in, breathe, get a quick shift. Um, move stagnant energy. I'm going to be doing bi-weekly live group uh, breathwork workshops. I'm eventually going to expand into embodiment practices, into meditations, mm. into mindset work. There's going to be a Facebook community um, and it's 20 bucks a month, you know? And so it's a total no brainer. Um, that's the thing I'm really, really pumped about right now to, to be sharing. That's coming out on September 22nd. And uh, I have a new one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching spot opening on November 2nd. You said one? One. <laughs> All right. Well, I love it. We'll go, go snag that one. I know. <laughs> I love it. That's it. cool. Well, Stevie, like Thanks, this is, man. this is dope. Like I'm so, let me acknowledge you and compliment you for something. Cause Aww. what I've noticed um, speaking with you is you actually are, it's really cool um, for you to, when you talk about embodiment, and slowing down and opening, um, you do embody that. Like you mm -hmm. embody the embodiment that you're talking about. Thank and, you. And even the way that you speak is very, it's intentional. And almost like the way you speak is like, I, like it is, it's sensual, it's inviting and sensual Aww, at the same time. Thank you. So, which is cool. It's like, ooh, I want to keep listening. So like the yeah. cadence. So anyway, you're doing the thing. Years of vocal training. <laughs> Which, no, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> right? And it's like all of that stuff that you went through, right, is like it's happened perfectly and like has led you up to this moment. Boom. Thank you so much, Ben. You ask such great questions and it's been a joy to be here. So thank you for sharing your community with me. You know it. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Hi, everybody. This is Stevie Wright. And together we're going to do a breathwork pattern today specifically for releasing anxiety. And so the first thing I want you to do is find yourself in a comfortable position, either seated on a chair with your feet planted on the floor or sitting on the ground, just making sure that there is some contact being made with the ground. And I just want you to notice in this moment if there's some Maybe frantic energy living in your body, heightened energy. This breath pattern we're going to use is going to be great for releasing that stagnation, releasing that heightened energy, anything you might be holding on to, any fears that might be coming up. And to me, the most important part of breath work is setting an intention. So our intention for this breath work is to release anxiety. And the mantra we're going to use is, I 
am calm. I am calm. And so I want you to notice in this moment the ground. Maybe tap your feet on the ground, wiggle your toes. Maybe press your palms into the ground. But I just want you to really let yourself get grounded here. Notice how solid the ground is. The ground has got you. The ground is not going to crumble out from underneath you. And in fact, you are completely safe in this moment. You're perfectly held by the planet. Beautiful. And if you want, you can even visualize a cord coming from your tailbone and rooting yourself into the center of the earth. The cord is diving deep into the planet, finding that clean, cool earth that's untouched by human hands. Beautiful. The breath pattern we're going to use today is the power breath and the blow breath. So the power breath is only through the nose, and it's a forced inhale and exhale. So it sounds like this. Then we're gonna to move to the blow breath, which is only through the mouth, and it sounds like this. And you're kind of snapping the belly in on that one. So we're gonna do 50 power breaths, 50 blow breaths. We're gonna take a deep breath in, hold for 30 seconds, and then release with a big sigh. Alrighty, and we're going to do that whole thing twice. I'll guide you the whole time. So closing the eyes now, getting comfortable, coming back to that mantra, I am calm, feeling the support of the ground beneath you. Here we go, starting with the nose. Three, two, one. <laughs> Blow. Deep breath in through the nose and hold. Beautiful. Hold the breath. Coming back to that mantra, I am calm. Feeling the anxiety leaving your body from that cord and going right into the center of the earth, knowing that the earth can turn it back into love. Here we go, five, four, three, two, one, ha. Beautiful, keeping the eyes closed, getting ready for that second round. I am calm, See, seeing if you can really let the breath renew you and cleanse you. Here we go, three, two, one. <laughs> Blow. (sighs) 
Deep breath in through the nose. Hold. I am calm. Hold that breath. Feeling the anxiety leaving your body. Noticing the stillness and the peace you're creating right in this moment. Hold. You got it. I am calm. We're going to release with a big, big breath. In three, two, one. <sighs> Keeping the eyes closed for just one more moment. Feeling the safety in your body. You did so good. Beautiful, beautiful work. I am calm. Taking this piece with you into the rest of your day. Such a good job. I'll see you next time.